the hands together. If you imagine the Holy Spirit, I think he has a groove. Y'all know that? You remember Genesis that he's moving on the water? That's what he was doing. Let us be the last to pass. Love the Lord is dead. As the Lord is making it, 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 as the
They can make daddy some money. Well, Praise God. He's a wonder in my soul. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All jokes aside, uh, it's always good to uh, let people, let the kids know, not just by hearing us preach the word, but living in front of them. Amen. Because I, my earliest, some of my earliest memories of mom and dad, mom and dad never had a, a session where they actually sat us down and said, this is how we pray. They did that. But the, but the greatest way I learned to have a prayer life was watching them. They didn't know I saw them. But I used to see dad in his prayer closet, which would be right in the living room. My mom would be in the bedroom. So it was it's a humbling thing as a child to see that your dad is praying for God's guidance. Your mom is praying for God's guidance. And I say that for those of you who are grandmas and grandpas and parents that, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Live out the life because you never know who's watching. Amen. 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 And we want to praise God. And uh, I'm not going to be up here in front of you too long, you know, so I can be invited back. Amen. <laughs> so we're going to turn to the book of Luke, the fifth chapter. And the name of my message is entitled, The Presence of the Lord is Here. If I say the presence, the presence of the Lord is here, Lord is we should still get some of the presence of the Lord is here, the presence of the Lord is here, I feel it in the atmosphere. I won't go there because we will keep saying it. Amen. <laughs> I like that song because the thing that, uh, about the time of this uh, broadcast that you're probably listening to, we traditionally in the United States have to keep in mind that we have people all over the world watching this and listening to this. So in this particular time, as this is being recorded, uh, this is the time in our country we celebrate Black History Month. They may have given, have given black people a hand clap. Amen. Amen. Um, now, now I'm going to do my best, but as a year goes on, we're going to celebrate our Asian brothers and sisters and our Native American brothers and sisters because each of us have a month. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Praise God. We should have a year, but we're given a month. Amen. So we praise God that each of us and our, and our individual heritage families are given at least a month to celebrate, amen? amen. So I'll do my best to celebrate our other uh, brothers and sisters' uh, months as well, amen? And the reason I bring that up is, particularly in our country, but not specifically in our country, but I'm just talking a little bit about there's so much division. Amen. It's sad that we are still struggling with yeah. the same struggle. The same devil of the 200 years ago is still here. Yeah, right. And unfortunately, he will be here until Jesus comes back. And I felt impressed to talk about this message because part of the reason is every year when a new year comes, people are looking for a new word from God. Amen. Amen. And as I was reading this part of the Gospels, it came to my attention. We are the only creatures in all of creation that are waiting for a new word from God. And we're thinking that a new year means that God's going to do something different. When you read this part we're about to read, the presence of the Lord is here. Amen. If you think about what that means, it means God's not waiting for a new clock to, to click and say, okay, now it's time for me to act because now it's a new year. God wants Christians all over the world to realize you are the clock starters. Amen. He's like, I'm waiting for you to press the alarm button so you can activate my power Amen. because I'm already pressing. Amen. 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 He's not waiting for a certain time to hear you. He's present right now to heal you. Amen. He's not waiting to give you a home that you're looking for. He's right now waiting to give you the home Amen. now. Amen. He's not waiting for your children to come back to the kingdom of God. He's wanting them to come now. Amen. So what I want to emphasize that those of you who are tuning in and even countries where you're wondering, oh my God, we have a dictator, a real dictator in our country. There's countries that have real dictators. That they, they don't have the privilege that we have in our nation to where they can just go into a church and worship God like they do. And they're like, when is God going to stand up and be God? And God's like, well, God has a word for you in those countries. I am right now present. You serve a right now God. Amen. He was in the days of Daniel when they told you you had to bow down to a statue. And because Daniel believed that I could activate the power of God anytime, at any place, Amen. anywhere, God showed up Amen. in the fiery furnace. Oh, bless his name. What am I saying is the presence of the Lord is here. He's not waiting. He's not waiting for a specific time to do something. He's waiting for you to activate the power of God. And a matter of fact, I like how one pastor talked about how the presence of God is like electricity. 
The power and the electricity is flowing already in the building, but you have to turn the light switch on to activate the influence of the electricity. That's what the presence of God is like. Do you realize that you all, as Christians all over the world, are conductors of power? Amen. 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 Oh, bless his name. You're conductors of power. When you said, Jesus, come into my life, I accept you as my Lord and Savior in the spirit realm. When you said it, though you didn't feel like it, immediately electricity came inside your body. Yes, and it's sitting in your body. That electricity, I'm calling electricity, is known as the power of God. Amen. Everybody said the power, the power of, God. of God. And the power of God is the spirit of God. Everybody said the, the spirit of God. And what you don't realize is everywhere you go, the presence of the Lord goes with you. Because he's within you. Because you are covenant keepers. Yes. And we accept Jesus as your personal savior. You become a carrier of the covenant. So whenever there's danger, you are a conductor of power. All you have to do is say Jesus. And you have activated the power within you to influence the environment that you're Praise in. The Lord. That's what this message was about. And I'm going to sit my happy self down. I already preached. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so anyway, in the book of Luke, the fifth chapter, Book of Luke, the fifth chapter. And we're going to look over where it says the 12th verse. Amen? So I'm going to see if I can find the right translation that most of you are in so it won't sound completely odd to you yet. So Book of Luke, the fifth chapter, and 12th verse. There were so many different ways I wanted to preach about this, but... The God that I serve always wants us to keep things simple. Amen? Amen? It's the simplicity of the gospel that saves people, not how well you impress people. Amen? Amen? So book of Luke, the fifth chapter, and twelfth verse, it says, And it came to pass, when Jesus was in a certain city, I hope I have the right scripture here. It's not where I want to go. Hold on. Here we go. Luke, the fifth chapter, is 17th verse, excuse me. It says, let me go to the 16th verse. And when he withdrew himself, Jesus withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which would come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Everybody say the power, the power of, the Lord of the Lord was present, was present to, heal them. to heal them. I want you to remember that. 18 verse, and behold, men brought in a bed, a man which was taken with palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto them, man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this that speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering and said unto them, What reason you into your hearts? Whether is it easy to say, Thy sins be forgiven you, or say to rise up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power upon earth to forgive sins, he said unto the sick of palsy, I say unto you, Arise, take up your couch, and go into your house. And immediately he rose up, and before them, and took up to that wherein he lay, and departed into his own house, and glorified God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. Now I want to read the same passage in a different translation. This is the message translation. And I want you to hear how it sounds. 17 verse, it says, One day, as Jesus was teaching, Pharisees and religious teachers were sitting around, like they always do. Sit around. And they had come from nearly every village in Galilee and Judea, as even as far away as Jerusalem to be there. The healing power of God was upon Jesus. Some men arrived carrying a paralytic on a stretcher, and they were looking for a way to get into the house set before him, before Jesus. When they couldn't find a way because of the crowd, they went up on the roof, removed some towels, and they let him down in the middle of everyone, right in front of Jesus, impressed by their bold belief. You hear that, y'all? Jesus was impressed by their bold belief. He said, friend, I forgive your sins. That set the religious scholars and Pharisees buzzing. Who does he think he is? That blasphemous talk. God and only God can forgive sins. 
Jesus knew exactly what they were thinking and said, why all this gossipy whispering? Which is simpler to say, I forgive your sins or to get up and start walking. Well, just so it's clear that I am the son of man and authorized to do either or both. He now spoke directly to the paralegal, get up, take your bed row and go home. Without a moment's hesitation, he did it, got up, took his blanket, left for home, giving glory to God all the way. The people rubbed their eyes incredulous, and they also gave God the glory. Awestruck, they said, we've never seen anything like this. And I said, we've never, we've never seen, anything, seen like anything like this. That's a word for you from God. He's about to do a wonder in your life that people around you say, I have never seen anything like this. You have said it yourself. God wants to bless you so much that you could be overwhelmed and say, I have never seen this before. And the reason I want to emphasize this is we serve a strategic God. We serve a God who is so overly generous that you ask him for a, a loaf of bread and he gives you a bakery. Praise That's the God you serve. Praise you ask God, you know, I have a headache. But he sees that you have some other issues going on. You know nothing about it. He'll heal you of all those other elements. Because you serve a God who's more than enough. Praise oh, praise God. When you hear that part when it says the presence of the Lord was present to heal, all this time I thought that meant that he was present to heal physical sin, physical uh, calities like the paralegic. But I, I kept looking at the closest and know it's bigger than that. You serve Jesus the first thing he said, he, he said he saw their bold faith. Everybody say he saw their bold? He saw, saw their bold, bold faith. faith. How do you see faith? It said that when he saw, let me tell you what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. What was the evidence of things not seen in this case? He saw their faith. When you say their, there's a combination of things. The man in the stretcher had to have faith. We forget about him. Amen. He was depending on four people to carry him from a roof. Think about that. He could have fell down and got even injured even further. But he had faith to believe that these four friends that we, he may not even have known. The Bible doesn't go in detail. We don't know that people just felt like we've heard about this man called Jesus that he can heal and deliver. And if he can heal and deliver this one from the dead, I think he can do something about those legs of yours. Amen. So this paralegal had faith to believe that these guys are going to carry him on the roof, uh -huh. carry him to Jesus. These men were determined to get to Jesus, that they want to get him through the door. But because of all these other people who were in the room to get healed, couldn't get healed because of their disbelief, they had to find another way around. Amen. This is a word for those of you who call yourself minorities. How many know those of you minorities, whether you are black, white, red, Hispanic, you feel like everybody else is in the front of the room. Everybody else is getting the jobs. Everybody else is getting the opportunity. Not realizing that the presence of the Lord is here right now. Amen. Marches are not going to get people to the front of the road. It's the presence of the Amen. Lord. Those of you who are full with or fear and you're wondering, oh my God, there's so many things going on with different government changes. God's like, but I'm forever present. Amen. As a matter of fact, I'm present in times of trouble. Amen. That's when you see his presence evidence in times of trouble. Whether you realize it or not, this is the best opportunity you're about to see God do things you've never seen him do before. Amen. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Amen. They never see a prayer that you can heal in this town. All those sick people. The Bible tells you that the Pharisees of Christ were sick. How many know that the people with the most hate in them are the sickest among us? Amen. Those who are full with unforgiveness. I'm speaking to those of you who are calling yourself black people. So we, we I might make a few people upset when I say this, but racism goes on both sides of the aisle. Mm -hmm. It's not just some white people who are racist. I have run across a lot of black people who are racist. Mm -hmm. And God wants us to get to the point where we start forgiving each other. Amen. That's why when Jesus looked at the paralegal, he says, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Who knows that one of the sins Jesus forgave him was unforgiveness? Jesus is like, I can't heal you until I Amen. deal with that sin problem. Amen. The presence of the Lord was there to deliver him not only his physical sickness, right. but his spiritual sickness. Amen. How many know you're dealing with a God who's strategic? Yeah. That he will yeah. bless you about things you didn't even ask him for. This, this sick man, didn't, he probably had so much unforgiveness about what he did wrong. That he felt he wasn't worthy to be in the presence of Jesus. 
But Jesus looked and said, you know, I forgive that. Amen. You didn't have the faith to ask me to forgive you of that secret sin you had. Uh -huh. But I'm going to forgive that. And what I love about Jesus is he never revealed what that sin was Praise in front of the Pharisees and scribes. That's the God you serve. He's not going to embarrass you in front of religious people. Amen. He's not going to lay you on completely uh, uncover so everybody knows your secret sin. Amen. You know what the secret sin is. And because he had the faith to believe that Jesus could deliver him, he was the only one that God delivered. Amen. Amen. Isn't God a wonder? Praise the Lord. Now, another thing I want you to see, another example of the presence of the Lord is here, and that he's here to deliver. You ever wondered, let's go to the book of Mark. I want to give you some real quick ways how you can tap into this presence of the Lord. Remember I told you, the Bible says that God is forever present in times of trouble. Amen. 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 And also, don't limit God. Because lately, I've been seeing God manifest himself outside the church. Remember I told you you're conductors of electricity? There's been times without revealing where I was. It's a non-Christian environment, is all I'm going to say. It was in a place where it's, you're not allowed to talk about your belief system. You're not allowed to talk about your faith because of how it's designed. And somebody was in my presence crying, about to be tearful because of how someone was treating them. And all of a sudden, I felt this overwhelming sense of compassion come. And it's the same thing I feel here. But it was stronger. And I told, I told my wife about it. And as I talked to the person... And this will happen to all of you if it hasn't already happened already. I, and, I, and I smiled at the, at the person. And I said, you don't need to worry about what's going on with that. All you need to do is do what's right and continue to do what's right. Because harvest time is already here. Amen. It may not feel like it. It may not look like it. But harvest time is here. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest will always be here. Amen. And lately... It's getting to the point that when the presence of God shows up, as you're planting the seed, harvest is right behind you. Oh, bless his name. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. As you sow seeds this morning, whatever that seed is, it's bigger than you think it is. As you're planting the seed into the ground, I, the King of kings and the Lord of the harvest, is right behind you, saith the Lord. The thing that you've been praying for right now, it is already behind you. Oh, give God the glory and the honor. Oh, bless his name. There's family members around you who are unbelief. They think God can't do whatever he said he can do. But you're going to come in the back way. Oh, bless his name. When people are taking for granted the presence of God, you have realized, I'm not going to take for granted the presence of God. And suddenly the Son of God will stop in his tracks while he's in the midst of directing planets. While he's in the midst of directing traffic, he'll stop and he sees your faith. He said, oh my goodness, they believe that I am God, that I am God all by myself, and I don't need nobody else. Oh, bless his name. And I was talking to this lady and I said, it may not feel like, it might even look like it's getting worse, but I promise you this, that if you be steadfast and unmovable, Things are about to change in the atmosphere. Amen. She's not even a Christian. She looked at me and says, I feel like I'm in a church service. Well, right. I, feel, I, feel like, I feel like there's something well, spiritual happening. And I well, smiled at her because it is. Praise oh, bless his name. Because God is the conductor inside your body. And it's shooting so big in you that he has to come out. I try to be all politically correct. But when I'm in the presence of trouble, the God who's forever present in time of trouble comes out of me and he speaks to my voice. Hallelujah. Did you realize that when you encourage people, that's a seed? Amen. Not realizing that while I was ministering to that person, that same day, remember Sharita? God gave us a bountiful harvest that we Praise never asked him for. Oh, bless his Praise name. Oh, the Lord, the God. Oh, bless his name. And that's what I want to get to. I don't have time, but I'm just going to tell you this. We look in the book of Genesis, the first chapter. And just bark, bark it down. Genesis, the first chapter. I found it interesting how the Bible says God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, and I love how one uh, uh, 
translation said that God created the heavens and earth, the seen and the unseen. Oh, bless his name. Everybody said the seen, the seen. And, the unseen. and the unseen. I'm fascinated by the unseen. Amen. Because the unseen is much greater than the seen. The reason why I'm so fascinated by that is some of you who are listening to my voice right now have AIDS. That's the scene. Some of you have cancer. That's the scene. Some of you have poverty. That's the scene. But there's a greater thing. As y'all know, see, there's a greater covenant. Well, the greater covenant is the unseen. Well, oh, the less his name. You are dealing with a God who's yes. the director of the seen and the unseen. Yes. Oh, I see the AIDS. I see the cancer. I see the poverty. But there's a greater thing. There's a greater covenant. Oh, but that's his name. Oh, glory to God. Oh, I feel like preaching. And what I love about God is, God plays with the devil. If I say God plays with the devil. I don't have time to tell you this, but the devil is the reason why Genesis the second, the first chapter and the second verse happened. God doesn't create gross darkness on the earth. I don't have time to tell you about that. That's a whole other series. But the book of Genesis, the first chapter, first verse, all the way through the 26th verse, talks about how God looked at a planet that was flooded. It was so flooded, so bad, that there was gross darkness to where everything was just completely flooded. There was no atmosphere. It looked like there was all confusion. There was nothing. But the God of the unseen showed up. Oh, well, let me see if I can find the right translation, because y'all don't love this. I was reading it this morning. I was like, Jesus, you are bad. Isn't that somehow you can read the same chapter in the same book 200 times, and you still see something you've never seen before? Amen. I saw something I've never seen before today, and I want to share that with y'all. Now, I love this. This is the message translation. Genesis, the first chapter, first verse. You know, I always got to get back to Genesis. I don't know what it is, but I love Genesis. Amen. It's the book, a book of beginnings. It's where we all came from. Amen. Yeah, amen. And this is the book that talks about all of our ancestors, for all of our white brothers and sisters and black and Hispanic and brown and, brown and yellow, all in between. All of us came from this genealogy. Amen. Because how many of them were all one human family? Amen. 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 And it says in the book of Genesis, the first chapter, first verse, it says, first this, God created the heavens and the earth, all you see and all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, bottomless emptiness, and inky blackness. Here's the part I love. And the Holy Ghost. Everybody said the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. That's what God does. He was present in the time of trouble of the Amen. earth realm. Amen. God wasn't shaken up when he saw his planet completely a mess. There was no shape. He was so cool with it that he sent his spirit. And he hovered. Grandma Bible says that he hovered over the waters. It means he brooded. You ever seen a bird when they brood over water? They're fluttering. Like, why are they fluttering? The Holy Spirit was fluttering because he was waiting to hear a word. Because notice when the Holy Spirit brooded like above a dove above the watery abyss, the third verse says, and God spoke. Uh -huh. Uh oh. Uh -huh. Where the Spirit of the Lord is. There's liberty. Amen. When the Spirit of the Lord is, when the Holy Spirit shows up into a room, it means he's about to hear a voice from God the Father. Amen. Did you remember when in the book of Mark, that was even part of my message, the fifth chapter, 17 verse, where it mentions how it says, and the presence of the Lord was there to heal. Uh -huh. The Holy Spirit waited for someone to speak a word. Uh -huh. And who spoke a word in Mark, the fifth chapter? Jesus. A member of the Godhead, Holy Spirit is waiting for someone to speak a word. Uh -huh. If you heard nothing else from what I'm telling you is, the presence of God is present, but what activates the power of God is like that light switch on the electricity is the word of Amen. God. Amen. God is not waiting for you to wait till January the 1st, another new year to come. He's like, I'm here. Amen. I don't need an appointment. I don't need nobody else to be who I am. Well, and matter of fact, the blessings that were meant for you in 2020, I will fast forward it and bring it back into your century, well, into your particular Lord. decade praise now, Lord. if you have the guts to believe. Hallelujah. Joshua, if you recall, was fighting, and this is not even part of my message, and the sun was about to go down. Well, and he remembered a promise from God. He said, like, I have a promise that this whole land is ours. Amen. And we don't have to worry about paying any property taxes. God just gave it to us. Well, God didn't give him a strategy how to do it. He just told him a promise. Uh -huh. 
That's all he had. He said, we're trying to defeat these enemies and the sun's about to go down. But what happened was the presence of God was present. And he spoke a word. He said, sun, stand still. Moon, stand still. And guess who calls the earth to stop? Look at the Lord. The Holy Ghost. Because he heard a word. Oh, bless his name. If you're stricken with sickness and disease, the presence of God is here. And he's asking you, speak the word. Speak the word when you think nothing's happening. Speak the word. When the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord, him shall renew their strength. How you wait? You speak the word. You stay in place. Amen. Amen. That's what you got to do. You don't just sit there and complain. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to be speaking the word. And when you feel like complaining, be quiet. Amen. And be sit still and know that he is God. Do you want to get blessed today? Amen. That's my message. I'm done. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. He's a wonder. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I just want to pray for everyone who is present. Uh, for those who are going through whatever type of situation they're going through. I thank you that you are present to deliver them right now. And what I love about the presence of God is you don't even have to feel his presence. Because he's here. Amen. You don't feel oxygen. You know it's here. And we just want to invite you who are tuning in to accept this Savior that we're talking about. He wants to deliver you. Say, Jesus, Jesus. come into my heart. Into my heart. I'm, a sinner. I'm a sinner. Forgive me, Forgive me. of all my, sins, all my sins, all my mistakes. All my mistakes. I, believe you died I believe you died and came back to life for me. Life for me. Live in me, Live in, in Jesus' name. Jesus. And Lord, I thank you that not only... Have you already blessed us? I thank you that you want to do a greater thing than that. You want us to be a blessing. You want us even in the midst of our pain right now as we're believing you to do those impossible things. We ask that you position us to be a blessing to other people around us as seeds. That they will know that this God that gives us comfort is present right now to give them comfort. And just to let you guys know before I leave. Don't wait to hear a word from God. Amen. He's already given you a word of God. Amen. When you see someone who is in pain, speak the word. Don't say it is written. Do what Jesus did. Jesus spoke as though he wrote the book. Amen. That's when the Bible says that they, they said he spoke with authority. Like someone with authority it means he didn't say according to the book of Moses. He said you will not live by bread alone, Amen. but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. There's a difference in saying it is written. Amen. He spoke like he wrote the book. Amen. I want you to talk to the devil like you wrote the book. Amen. Because as far as he's concerned, when you speak the word, what is already written is as though Jesus himself is talking. Amen. So may God bless you all.